Okay, I wanted to revisit an interesting series I did a few weeks back. We've got the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over three n plus one minus one over three n. In the first video on this, I did this kind of turning it into an integral. And here we're doing a totally different method that was suggested in the comments by taterpon6211. And that was to use the digamma function on this. I really didn't consider that when I first did this problem, but it's such a good idea. I wanted to do a video on it. So to get started with this, in order to try to get it in the right form and set this up, what I want to do is factor out a three or factor out a one third. But actually what I'm going to do, let's factor out a minus one third, because then in one step, I can actually reverse it and flip these. So what's going to happen is this becomes just a positive n or positive one over n. And then reversing it with this one, this is going to become minus one over n plus one third. And then for my next step, this is totally optional. This is just something I like to do or the way I like to look at it, but you can kind of skip this one is I want to do an index change and do, we'll add a plus one here and here. And then doing that, we can subtract one from the index here and make this a zero. So then that way this here becomes n plus one on this term. And then adding plus one here, I can make this a four thirds. And doing it that way didn't really accomplish anything except for to set it up for the series expansion of the digamma function in the form I want to use it. So let's look at that really now. Okay, so we have our series expansion for the digamma function over here to the right. And so you'll notice that this part of our formula over here is set up almost exactly like what we have over here. We got the one over n plus one part, we got the bounds right. The only thing, so this four thirds, this is gonna be this z right here. And then this thing right here, this is the euler mascheroni constant. If you're not familiar, this is something like 0 0.577 going on forever. Of course, you have a minus sign in front. And now all I need to do to get this into the form where I want to use it is if we just add the euler mascheroni constant on both sides here, then this is going to cancel out. And now we've got an expression for our series to rewrite all of this stuff. Using the formula, all this is going to become just digamma of four thirds, our z value there, plus the constant, plus euler mascheroni constant. And then this right here, this is a kind of answer, right? This is done and it's pretty compact and not that bad. Looking back at that other video, the thing that I was noticing is this looks nothing like the answer we got in that other video. And particularly, there definitely wasn't the Euler Mascheroni constant in it. Let's just take a look at that solution from the other video. So now here's the other solution we got from the other video. And I believe this is correct, but I also believe this is correct. So how can it be that these are somehow equal, particularly when we have to get like, how do you get the Euler Mascheroni constant out of this? How's that possible? Or what do we do with this? Well, it turns out that calculating the digamma function is not that bad. And I think as long as you have, and I think as long as you have a rational expression as the input, you can always get an exact solution for this. So I think what we need to do is really just focus on this digamma of four thirds and see what we can do to simplify that. Okay, now from here, what I wanna do, we just wanna show that these two things are equal and I'm just gonna put the focus on this digamma of four thirds that we wanna simplify. And for that, I have all these formulas over here to the right. We're gonna use um, three formulas, I think, probably going in order. So the first one, it's interesting because they have kind of a relationship it's similar to with the gamma function. Like this first one, if you think of it like with the gamma function, we have the relation to the factorial that allows us to reduce it. Well, this is kind of similar right here because we get to reduce it by one, but we've got this one over z thing. So just using this formula over here, we can reduce it from four thirds, subtract one, and we get digamma of one third plus one over one third. But this thing, one over one third, let's just write that as a three. And now we have this down to one third. But the question is now, how do I find a value for digamma of one third? Well, for that, I want to use this one right here just to focus on digamma of one third. So if we plug in, I'm going to make my z value one third here. So plugging in that z value, what we have here is digamma of two thirds minus digamma of one third. And now this right here is really similar to Euler's reflection formula that we use a lot when we're dealing with the gamma function. So for the right side of this, we end up with pi cotangent pi and again, our z, which is one third. Well, for cotangent of pi over three, I like to remember the value of tangent. Tan of pi over three is square root of three. So with cotangent, we take the reciprocal and we get one over square root of three. So we'll write this as pi over square root of three. And now it kind of seems like we just made things more complicated because now we have another value that we don't know. We've got digamma of two thirds that we're throwing into it, but I think it's gonna work out because then we're gonna move on to our third formula right here. 
Okay, now for this one, I messed around with it quite a few different ways. I wanna see what options there were, but what we wanna do, I think let's stick with our Z as one third in here. So we're gonna have our N value times one third. What I wanna do is I wanna create my N value so we get something nice. What I can do is set N equal to three here. That way this thing just becomes one. For the digamma of one, we've got a known value for that. I think I went over this. I know I showed this in a previous video. This value is actually the same thing as minus the Euler Mascheroni constant. So, so this value is gonna help us out in a second, but let's keep going with the formula because now we know this is our N, this is our Z, so we can just kind of plug in. One over N is gonna become one third here. Then we have this sum from K equals zero to N minus one. So subtract one on that, we get a two for our upper bound here. Then we have this digamma of our Z, which is one third, plus this K value over N, which is again three and then we're gonna have just a natural log of three on the end. Well, this part's gonna simplify nicely. On the left side, we have this minus the digamma function, one third here. If you expand this out, you're just gonna have three terms. You're gonna have k equals zero, one, two. You plug in, you get digamma one third plus digamma two thirds plus digamma three thirds, but that's just one. So we'll have here a digamma of one. And then on the end, we got our plus natural log of three. But then this value right here, digamma one, is the thing we had over here. We know again that this is gonna be, this is, so this is gonna be minus the Euler Mascheroni constant over here. Then let's just multiply by three on both sides here. Multiply by three is gonna cancel with this and we get a three on this. Then let me rearrange it. Let's just isolate this part. I'm gonna bring this to the left side of the equation. So we end up, so we end up here with digamma one third plus digamma of two thirds. And then like adding this here and adding one of these here, we end up with a minus two times Euler Mascheroni constant. And then because we brought it to the other side, this is gonna become a minus three LN three, just rearranging everything. And at this point, it still seems like kind of a mess, but what we did is we've created like two equations and two unknowns here and here. So what we can do is put these together and solve for our unknowns, find our value. What we wanna find is the digamma of one third. So let's put these two together and solve for that value that we need. So when I did this one the first time, what I did was I just added these two together and the gamma of one thirds cancel. That's pretty nice, but then we're left with a value for gamma of two thirds and we want a value for gamma of one thirds. So instead what I wanna do is let's actually subtract them. And in order for it to work out nice, let's flip it the other way. So anyway, if we subtract them, these values are gonna cancel. And then if I, and then again, if we subtract this from this, we end up with two copies, die gamma one third. And then we just write down all this stuff, minus two of this, minus three ln three, subtract this, minus pi over square root of three. Divide off this two, divide on both sides. This cancels off over here. Let's simplify this a little bit. We end up with just dividing into two, we end up with minus di gamma, minus three halves, ln three, minus pi over two square root of three. But in order to get it back to our goal, we want gamma of four thirds, so we can use this thing that we saved from before. So for gamma of four thirds, the only difference, we just need to add three to it. So we're gonna have, I'll put the three at the front, three minus all this stuff. And so all we need to do is let's take this and we just need to plug it back in here and finish it off. Okay, now here we have this long expression that still looks kind of different than the answer we want. But first, this is where we get to cancel out the Euler Mascheroni constant because this minus this is just zero. Then I just need to distribute in this minus one third here. So when I do that for the first part, we get a minus one. Distributing in here, we get a plus one half ln three. Distribute the minus one third in here, we get a plus pi over six square root of three. Now, all I need to do to finish this is just reorder it just a little bit. So what we'll do is, here, let's kind of change up the, um, so let me flip things around. I can take this one half and bring this into the exponent here, and what we're gonna have this becomes ln square root of three minus one plus pi over six square root of three. And that's gonna be the same solution we have right here and from the other video. Okay, so I was gonna say this is actually a shorter method because in a way we got to a solution in like two minutes, but then it took another like 10 minutes to get all this stuff simplified down. So it depends how you look at it. Either way, I think it's a really interesting method to kind of go through all the steps and see how we can do it two totally different ways and get the same solution. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.